Hello everyone, in this video I'm going to tell you all the steps on how not to onboard a new employee. This is going to be a lot of fun. How not to onboard a new employee. We only have a few rules. This is really quick and easy and simple. So here we go. First rule on how not to onboard a new employee is number one, don't reach out before they start. There is nothing more annoying, nothing <coughs> that upsets a new employee more than hearing from their new boss the day before, a couple of days before, the night before they're supposed to start working. I mean, to give them a call and ask if they have questions, I mean, gross. Nobody wants to hear from their boss the day before the night before. Don't even think about sending like a, a welcome letter or a welcome package. I mean, no, 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 no. Nobody wants to hear from the manager before they start working. That's rule number one. Don't reach out. Rule number two is avoid, and I mean avoid at all cost, general orientation. General orientation. If you're like some of the facilities that I work in, we have a, an orientation for all staff that come in. Sometimes the orientation lasts a half a day, some is a full day, some orientation's a couple of days long. The last thing a manager should do is go and greet their new employee before general orientation, or God forbid, follow up with them after general orientation, like at the end of the day or the end of a lot of, a lot of our staff go through general orientation and only in it for a half a day. Don't, whatever you do, go follow up with your new employee at noon when they got out and say, how did everything go? Do you have any questions? Are you prepared for the next day that you're supposed to be scheduled to work? Don't avoid general orientation. Don't make contact. Not prior. Don't make contact. Stay in the shadows. Oh my God, employees love it when managers don't support them. I mean, they love it. It's so fun. Rule number three is, of course, after orientation, don't show them around. I mean, honestly, you interviewed them, what, a week ago, two weeks ago, four weeks ago, five weeks ago, and you probably showed them a few things then. And I mean, if they can't remember from five weeks ago what the facility looked like and what we were doing, I mean, that's on them. Can we agree? I mean, don't they have to have a little bit of self-responsibility here? I mean, I wouldn't waste my time showing around a brand new employee, like showing them where their time clock is or where the employee break room is or introducing them to people that they're going to be working with and around. <laughs> Forget it. I wouldn't do that, not for one second. And while I'm on this tangent, by the way, this one is also really important. We're talking about how not to onboard a new employee is don't communicate with them. Don't communicate with them at all. As a matter of fact, not only would I not communicate with them, but I would be damned if I'm going to give them any information as far as like phone numbers or who to go to, give them a contact person to go to if they have questions or show them my text messages or show them the best way to get a hold of anybody. God, for no, 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 no. You know what's definitely, you know what's so fun? Is instead of doing that, you know what I am going to do? I'm going to write them up if I do see them on their phone. I won't let them know how to communicate with me, but I will write them up if I see them texting on their phone, even if they are trying to text me, friends. I don't care. I don't care. Listen, I don't care. But the, the other thing that I really love, and this one... This one is probably my favorite, my favorite one. And here it is. Rule number five on how not to onboard a new employee is don't train them. Oh, my God. That, this one is so fun. Don't train them. Instead, you know what you do? You put them with someone else. You have some other employee. Have them shadow or work with another employee. I mean, the benefits of this are... The new employee, A, they get total access to a person who may or may not really like the job and may or may not like the company, may or may not like the manager, and we're just going to stick them in there. And, and you know what else that old employee, the, the, not the old employee, but the employee that's already there, the one training the new employee, what's really fun is they get to show them, they get to talk to them all day about their attitudes, their struggles, their opinions, what they think is wrong with everything, which, by the way, is probably a lot. I mean, a full day of how this place just really stinks. I mean, I mean, if you're going to have success with a new employee, I mean, you put them with someone else to train. I think one of my best, one of my favorite 
outcomes is ha- of, of having somebody else train my new employees. My favorite outcome, this one's really, really great. This is a smart one. It's I put two people in a one person job and I'll do it for a couple of days. Like I'll have them shadow for a couple of days. So two people are doing one job and on the third day I put them by themselves and they're like, this is way too much work. I, I you know, I've had, I've, I've been doing it with another person for two days. It's, I mean, I, I call it like the sucker punch. I mean, don't you love sucker punching new employees? I mean, it is the greatest, the greatest how to not to onboard a new employee. Number six. Number six is, of course, don't follow up. No following up. we cross that up. Don't follow up, especially, I mean, don't follow up at, before their breaks. Don't follow up at lunch. Certainly don't follow up at the end of the day and say, hey, how did everything go today? Don't fo- Whatever you do, avoid following up. Again, less communication is better when we're talking about a new employee. And finally... And finally, and perhaps the most, everybody loves this. I see it so often. You would think, because I see this happen so often, you would think this is the smartest thing to do with a new employee. Here we go. It isn't, by the way, which is why it's on my list of how not to onboard a new employee. Number seven, we're going to stop here at number seven because it's so fun, although this list could probably go on a lot longer. It is have the employee, the new Employee, start on your day off. Oh, <laughs> is there something? I've got to tell you what. There is nothing sweeter that. There's nothing sweeter than having an employee start on the day you're not there. You're not there to help. Not there to communicate. Not there to check in. Not there to do anything. It is the greatest. Okay, so of course I'm being completely facetious. And the reason I'm trying to poke fun at this is because it's not a fun situation. It's a terrible situation. I am in a situation right now. I work with a lot of managers right now who have a terrible time keeping employees. We don't have a terrible time hiring employees. Heck, we've gotten through the hiring process. We've nailed it down. I mean, we have background checks and fingerprints and medical records and PPD. I mean, all this stuff. It's a crazy process that takes weeks. And then I go, okay, so we're not having a problem hiring people. So what is happening after we hire people? And this is what's happening after we hire people. This is how my managers, this is how managers are treating new staff members. And they wonder, why won't people work here? Why don't they like it here? Oh, it must be somebody else. It must be another department. No, friends. No. This is how you do not hire and onboard a new employee. If you're doing any of these things, I beg you, plead you, please, for the love of God, stop. This isn't how it works. Do the opposite of all this and you will start having staff stay longer. Ah.